A winter weather advisory has been issued for the potential of snow for central and eastern Kentucky. We will track those chances and give you the latest forecast on how much you can expect in your area coming up. If it's too cold for you, it is too cold for your pets. With more snowfall and cold temperatures on the way, coming up we'll tell you how to keep you and your pets safe. Georgetown police say the pellet gun that a man pointed at officers looked real enough that one of them shot him. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening to you. Winter has definitely arrived. It's been a very cold day across the bluegrass, and we are tracking some snow heading our way. A winter weather advisory already has been issued for tomorrow, and that's why we have declared today a WKYT first alert severe weather day. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has an early look at a colder forecast, Jim. Colder, wintry, all the nastiness that we avoided for so long. It just keeps coming at us here, and it's going to start again during the overnight hours and into the day tomorrow. Even our winter weather advisory now highlighting most of the area, most of Kentucky highlighted, really. You've got central Kentucky and southern parts and eastern parts of Kentucky all under the winter weather advisory running through in the morning through tomorrow night, essentially. That kind of wraps all of it up. What we're tracking is some energy that will dive in from the north, and we even have some snow across Kentucky right now, at least showing up. Now, a lot of it evaporates long before it ever reaches the surface here, but still, it's out there. So here's your threat. We'll look at them all on different levels. Roads, certainly an issue tomorrow. Even with a light amount of snow, we can run into some issues on area roadways. Wind is going to have more of a double-edged sword with it because it's going to be blowing the snow around, reducing visibility, and the temperatures are tanking tomorrow and into Wednesday, so you've got the wind chill thrown into the mix as well. Snow amount isn't that high, but it's certainly enough to cause those tricky travel troubles as we go rolling into your Tuesday through the day tomorrow. We will track all of this and give you some of those totals coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jim. And these cold temperatures are dangerous for anyone, but as winter settles here into the bluegrass, firefighters have some advice. They say that if you have to go outside, make sure you dress in layers and cover your head and your hands. They also ask that, if you, ch that you should check on your elderly neighbors to make sure that they're okay. You know, go and check on them. Uh, if you know of anybody, I believe the city's implemented their cold weather plan. I believe it's 211 uh, is the easy number to remember. And uh, just watch out for each other, watch out for your pets as well. Firefighters also advise don't use your stove as a heating device. They also say don't use your grill inside. Well, speaking of those pets, the cold temperatures don't just affect people. Shelter leaders say if it is too cold for you, it is too cold for your pets. WKYT's Mike Linden is talking to officials at the Lexington Humane Society. New at 530 tells us how to keep your pets safe this winter. With another round of winter weather and bitter cold temperatures on the way, Lexington Humane Society officials want to remind you to not forget about keeping your pets safe, too. When it's below freezing, everyone wants to make sure they limit their time outside. Um, please do so for your pets as well. There's not a necessarily a specific temperature. When it comes to keeping your pets safe from harm during cold weather, you want to think of them as if they were humans. Take Samson here, for example. If he were to stay out in the cold overnight, he could get sick just the same way a human could. They can get frostbite. They can get hypothermia. Um, the list can continue to go on, but we want to make sure that we keep all of that from happening and educate the community on how to take care of their animals in these cold temperatures. Officials say if your pet sleeps outside, to take extra precautions this season. We want to make sure that if you do have animals outside, that you have proper shelter for them, which includes a cover on the front of their kennel or their doghouse. When it comes down to it, Hammond says there's one rule to follow above all else. If it's too cold for you, it is too cold for your pet. So please make sure to check on them as often as possible. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. And Hammond tells us both cats and dogs are equally affected by the cold. Remember, you can get the latest radar forecast and weather headlines on WKYT.com and the WKYT News app. A man is recovering tonight at UK Hospital after being shot by police. The shooting happened around 1.30 this morning on North Hamilton Street in Georgetown. Police say that Stephen Young pointed a gun at them and an officer shot him twice. Police have since learned that gun was actually a pellet gun. Victor Puente is tracking the investigation in this crime tracker report. 
Georgetown police say they expect the man who was shot to survive his injuries, and they say he'll be facing charges once he gets out of the hospital. Police Chief Mike Bossy says they were called to the home on North Hamilton Street by the family of 29 year old Stephen Young. He says Young had hit his five month old child and was also assaulting the child's mother. When officers arrived, they were informed that the subject was inside the residence with a firearm. Bossy says officers found Young in a bedroom pointing a weapon at them. When the officer asked him to see his hands, he stood up and said, I've got a gun. That's when police say the officer fired, hitting Young twice in the upper torso. It wasn't until after uh, the subject was under control and first aid was being given that he at some point removed the weapon from his, his pants to examine it and found out that it was, was uh, a pellet gun. Bossy says that pellet gun at the top of this photo looks so much like a Beretta pictured on the bottom the officer had no way of knowing it wasn't a real firearm. I would not allow someone to point a gun at me for much more than it takes the time for me to pull my trigger. Court records show Young had a warrant out for his arrest for flagrant non-support. Investigators don't believe Young's injuries are life-threatening, but they do believe drug use played a part in the incident. Police say Young will be charged with assault. They also say he'll be facing charges for pointing a weapon at those officers. In Scott County, Victor Puente. WKYT. The last shooting involving a Georgetown police officer happened last June. Officers were working with the Scott County Sheriff's Department and state police when burglary suspect William McKee was shot. Police say he raised his gun at officers. He did survive his injuries. The search for a Southern Kentucky teenager continues tonight. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Whitley County. 16-year-old Travis Bryant was reported missing early Friday morning when his foster parent noticed he was not home. Deputies say they believe 25-year-old James Wimmer of Indiana kidnapped the teen. We're told Wimmer and Bryant were friends. We do know that their mothers are friends, and that's a relation. Why he came down here and picked him up in this mannerism? We don't know. Police in Indiana say Wimmer has a lengthy criminal record and was supposed to be in court today, but he did not show up. In Hardin County, jail officials are investigating the death of a girl. The Kentucky Department of Juvenile Justice says a girl was found unresponsive at the Lincoln Village Regional Juvenile Detention Center in Elizabethtown this morning. She later died. Jail officials have not released a cause of death, and her name has not been released. In Rockcastle County, the sheriff's office has a new tool to help them find missing people thanks to a generous donation from a Colorado man. Richard Burleys is the director of the Alley Foundation. Foundation. His granddaughter went missing and was found murdered in 1993. Since then, he has taken it upon himself to donate purebred bloodhounds to police departments across the U.S. And today, he was in Mount Vernon to present Hunter to the sheriff's office. We strictly work with bloodhounds for law enforcement because of their, the, their ability to track human scent and to discriminate human scent. And they are really a, a great tool to have when you have a missing child. Hunter is just three months old. He and his handler, a deputy sheriff, will be training in Laurel County. New tonight, Lexington police are investigating a series of break ins at some storage units. The thefts happened at the U Store it storage units on James Court. Police say that eight units were broken into, but only one unit had items reported missing. At this time, police tell us a TV and a Blu ray player were stolen. Police say that more owners should check their units because there could be more items reported missing. Lexington police are also investigating a break in a tobacco zone. The theft happened Sunday. Police tell us the burglar broke the drive through sliding glass window and took some cartons of cigarettes. Police are waiting to get surveillance video from that store. Lexington city leaders have given the new developers of Center Point another extension on an order to fill in the site. The 30 day extension was issued on January 5th. According to our partners at the Herald Leader, the city is waiting for a real estate consultant's report that will help them decide if moving City Hall to Center Point is a good use of taxpayers' money. The developers can get a third extension after the current one runs out in February. The city says the report will be presented to them in the next several weeks. The Department of Transportation has taken a major step towards requiring new safety technology to be in all new cars in the U.S. The vehicle to vehicle or V2V communication allows cars on the road to talk to each other, warning drivers of dangers ahead before they happen. 
Equipping the country's cars and trucks with so-called V2V communication will essentially allow vehicles to see each other and warn of a potential danger well before a driver sees it. Our goal is to, is to see this technology uh, put in place as soon as possible. The new rule calls for standard V2V technology phased in over a period of years, but it still must clear administrative hurdles and a public comment period. V2V uses technology similar to Wi-Fi, allowing cars in close proximity to share information like speed and direction several times a second, allowing the car to warn a driver before changing lanes or about a hazard ahead. Already, some cars come with blind spot detection and automatic braking to prevent some collisions. V2V enabled vehicles may also be able to communicate with infrastructure like stoplights, letting drivers know how long until an upcoming light changes. Jamie Kipman is New York bureau chief for Automobile Magazine. He agrees it's life saving technology, but believes it'll be a number of years before issues like security against hacking and privacy are fully addressed. You are going to be able to be tracked um, like you've never been tracked before. The auto industry is expected to support this new regulation. Early cost estimates on V2V technology put it at about $100 per vehicle, but that's expected to drop as time goes on. The transportation secretary says the technology may help prevent up to 80% of crashes on this country's roads. And I think it'll have to be decided by the Supreme Court. Still ahead on WKYT News at 5.30, Senator Rand Paul is questioning another presidential candidate's citizenship, why he thinks Ted Cruz may be unqualified to run for the White House. An Eastern Kentucky coal company filing for bankruptcy, how Arch Coal's employees will be affected. And a winter weather. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. Their cancer patients are really special people. They're determined, they're tough, and they're such wonderful people to care for. It's really great to offer patients the standard of care, but then we have trials so that we can also give them the cutting edge, where we explain to the patient this is the standard, but this might be even better. Because of the excellent work we do, we've received an outstanding award from the Commission on Cancer. I'm Dr. Hain, and we treat every one of our patients like family at Baptist Health. I believe people can taste the difference family makes. I've seen it. Uh, I've experienced it. I believe they can taste it in not only their experience with our product, but I believe when you say your family has prepared something for you, you have a pretty high expectation of what that's going to be. And when this cup of coffee delivers on that, you realize that the family has made a difference. It's that rich, smooth flavor that we guarantee you love in every cup. I wasn't too thrilled about dentures, but I need to be able to chew. So I called Aspen Dental, they got me right in because my visit was long overdue. And no one on staff even made me feel bad that I had been in since the leg warmer fed. My new dentures came with a great guarantee, so this giant pretzel's got nothing on me. With dentures starting at $3.99 and a money-back guarantee, dentistry's never been easier. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. I love Kentucky because it's my home. It's where I was born and raised, and it's me. The people of Kentucky are proud to be Kentuckians, proud of the heritage, proud of the tradition, and I, I share that pride. Whether they're single moms, elderly couples, working families, those are the kind of people that we help. At the end of the day, helping Kentucky is what it's all about. If someone needs help or one of their loved ones needs help, all they have to do is give us a call. Hair Win. Lawyers helping people. 859-780-3333. Enroll or switch to CareSource by January 31st. Visit caresourcejustforme.com. way to have fun every five minutes. Fueling imagination. Funding education. The Harlem Globetrotters! Coming to Rupp Arena this Saturday, January 16th at 7. Great seats at Ticketmaster.com. Snow on the way for the area. That's why we are tracking a first alert severe weather day and already showing up with some energy, some moisture moving across Kentucky right now. The catch is a lot of this not reaching the ground. Now, yes, in some cases, you've probably seen a few flakes of snow flying, maybe even a full blown snow shower. The odds are stacked against it, at least right now. 
later on tonight, those chances do increase. But you certainly see it showing up through the uh, metro area here right now across parts of Fayette into uh, parts of Scott County, Bourbon County, all around us. At least maybe a flake or two in that area. We'll get more, though, if you want more. Winter weather advisory is on the way. It will officially go into effect overnight early tomorrow morning, depending on your location. But it covers central, northern, and southeastern Kentucky and expires tomorrow evening or tomorrow night. Just matters again on location. A little bit later for you folks in the mountains. Hour by hour forecast, we start tracking some snow right around morning commute time. It sweeps through the area here, and it's going to be uh, joined by some pretty gusty winds at this point as well. We'll watch those winds come in around 30, 35 miles per hour. So these temperatures. Just ignore them because the actual feels like temperature is going to be a whole lot worse, probably in the 20s and teens at that point, and they continue to get colder as we progress into the afternoon hours. You notice the peak heating of the day, which occurs this time of year, is somewhere between about 3 and 5 o'clock usually. That's where you're going to find the highest temperature posted. Notice at 4 o'clock tomorrow, though, we're down into the 20s, and the colder air continues to sink in overnight and early into uh, your uh, Wednesday morning as well. Watch those teens continue to battle in here. I'll show you those wind gust forecasts in just a second, though. First call for snowfall, 1 to 3 inches through Lexington, now toward Moorhead, a little bit less. And I'm just talking maybe a little bit uh, down to the south and east across uh, the folks there in Somerset, London, into Hazard, Pikeville. But here in Lexington, one to three inches a good possibility by the time it's all said and done when it wraps up tomorrow. Then behind it, we've got to deal with some Arctic air from Tuesday into Wednesday. This is a first taste of it. We'll get another, though, coming in toward the weekend. I mean, it's just loaded with cold and snow chances in the seven day forecast. So what we get is temps tumbling on Tuesday, as you notice there with our hour by hour. Sub zero wind chill possible by the time we get into Wednesday morning. That is impressive. And when we're talking 15, 20, maybe even 30 mile per hour wind gusts at that point, as well as it's kind of tailing out of here, you run into some issues. So, a lot coming your way. Here comes our seven day forecast, too, that has all of those details. Here's the good news about that first Arctic blast it doesn't last really that long because before you know it, we're back in the upper 30s and quick little run to the 40s before we back off and do it again. Because in that seven day, we have two days with single <laughs> digit actual air temperatures and then even teens for highs. So winter's all over that, right? I couldn't even help but look at next Monday. I know I shouldn't look that far uh, ahead. It's hard. You put blinders on. <laughs> it's hard not to look, but you're right. A lot of winter coming up. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Police are still working a couple of issues. Uh, one is the exit ramp remains closed, I 75 south of the 110. It's been closed for a while. Diesel fuel on that uh, exit ramp has caused them to have to shut it down on Winchester Road. And there's a collision, I 75 northbound. This is between the 104 and the 106. Uh, a tractor trailer will return there. They continue to work that northbound 75. Drive times will obviously be impacted if either one of those areas are part of your route. Uh, but it looks like over across the Clays Ferry Bridge southbound, once the, the 110 is cleared, about normal on into Madison County. Same in the Scott County, I-75 north in the Scott County, looks up toward Georgetown and Winchester. No major delays on the U.S. 60. How back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. New polls show the race for the White House is getting even tighter. With the first primary just three weeks away, Senator Ted Cruz and Donald Trump are tied for the Republican nomination in Iowa. And Trump continues to question Cruz's eligibility to be president. He's raising doubts about whether the senator's Canadian birth disqualifies him. But Cruz says a child born abroad to a U.S. citizen is still a natural born citizen. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is agreeing with Trump. I think the Democrats will challenge it at the very least, and I think it'll have to be decided by the Supreme Court. And the Iowa caucuses will be February 1st. Trump and Cruz are leading the polls there. Senator Paul has less than 5% of the votes. Kentucky's House Republican floor leader announcing last week that today could be an historic day in the state. House Democrats had an unplanned meeting this afternoon. Usually they meet on Wednesdays. Republicans also held a meeting. The House reconvenes at 4, and according to the Herald Leader, Republican floor leader Jeff Hoover said he has no news today. A coal company with a mine in Kentucky has filed for bankruptcy. Arch Coal owns 11 mines across the country, including the Lone Mountain Mine in Harlan County. The St. Louis-based company says it's been hurt by the weakening demand for coal. Arch Coal says its mines will remain open and its employees should not be immediately affected by the bankruptcy process. 
The national championship goes on the line tonight, Rob. Alabama favored over Clemson. The coaches talk about the game out in Arizona. And we heard from Ty Winyard today. What does he think of the athleticism since joining the Wildcats? That's next on WDKYT. CBS Wednesday. Do you like games? I do. A blind date. Watch this. It becomes a deadly game. He planted a bomb in the building. There are innocent people here. She just armed the bomb. I'm just a girl with daddy issues. New Criminal Minds. Then, don't miss the first new episode of the year. She can't be a player. The guy. Code Black. After Criminal Minds. New CBS Wednesday. You can be sure of a Toyota RAV4's all-wheel drive capability because AMCI testing shows RAV4 outperforming other SUVs in snow. Acceleration. RAV4 beats Honda CRV while Subaru Forester is slowest. Braking. RAV4 stops 50 feet before CRV and 83 feet sooner than Forester. Now you can get the new restyled 2016 RAV4 with 0% financing. Toyota. Let's go places. Meet the Moors. We're the Moore family. And as you can see, we needed internet that could do more. We do more games. And more streaming. So we need more speed. That's why we switched to Time Warner Cable. Now we can connect more devices at the same time. Hi, Hi Grandma, Grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Time Warner Cable even has an internet plan for us. Get the speed you need. Internet plans start as low as $14.99 per month. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC. Hi, I'm Coach Cal here with UK graduate Kim Knopf of Sleep Outfitters. Sleep is a critical component of our athletic training at UK. And we're excited to announce that Sleep Outfitters is now the official sleep provider of the University of Kentucky Athletics. We're celebrating by offering exclusive UK Champions Collection mattresses and pillows. See the UK Champions Collection only at Sleep Outfitters. The candidate from Cartown Kia can give people $8,000 off new Kia Optimus. What can you offer? Well, we have yesterday's coffee. <laughs> There's no debate. Get $8,000 off MSRP on all select new 2015 Kia Optimus in stock at Cartown Kia. Take home a new 2016 Kia Sorento SUV for only $189 per month. And if you have a job bringing home $350 per week, we want to approve your credit. We can do credit. We don't do credit. Don't debate it. Get to Cartown Kia. Yeah, I can't believe this DQ five buck lunch comes with fries, drink, and a sundae. Can't believe it now comes with this KC barbecue burger. I can't believe Randy's barbecuing. Oh! It's barbecue season at DQ with the new KC barbecue bacon cheeseburger five buck lunch. You need a breakfast built for work days, not weekdays. The chicken and gravy breakfast burrito from your DQ. A chicken strip plus eggs, cheese, and pepper gravy and a warm flour tortilla. Served with crispy hash browns and coffee. Just one of our delicious three buck breakfasts. Only at your DQ. Take WKYT with you wherever you go with the WKYT News app. The latest news at your fingertips when you're on the go. WKYT. For all your hearth and grill needs, shop BarnhillChimney.com. Big man Ty Winyard has yet to play in a game for the Wildcats, but he could come in at any time. Winyard hasn't been at UK for even a month. There is a learning curve for the 6'10 New Zealander. He's had to get in shape. Winyard talked for the first time today as a cat and said the athleticism is better than he expected. Oh, it's really high, you know. Um, even being back home, I played a lot with men and stuff, being in that uh, competition back home. So that prepared me a lot, but like, this is just. This is uh, another step up, you know, um, everyone's a lot more athletic and a lot physical and uh, yeah, it's just real good. He's, he's working hard, he's getting better, he's getting in better shape. Um, he's a physical presence, it's helping us in practice a lot. He's been able to push uh, our other big guys uh, to a physical limit. Um, he's done some nice, nice things, uh, he's trying to pick things up. Tomorrow night, Mississippi State coming into Rupp Arena. The Bulldogs have been struggling. They have yet to win on the road this season. It will be a 7 o'clock tip-off on ESPN. 
And Kentucky's game against Kansas on January 30th will tip at 7 o'clock in Allen Fieldhouse out in Lawrence. That one will be on ESPN. Wildcats slipped down to 14 in the rankings this week. Kansas currently number one in the polls with a 14-1 and one record. For the fifth time this season, EKU forward Nick Mayo is the Ohio Valley Conference Freshman of the Week. Mayo averaged 12.5 points per game, 6.5 rebounds, and one assist last week. 6'9 forward out of Oakland, Maine, the first colonel to be named OVC Freshman of the Week five times in a season since Matt Witt back in the 2002-2003 season. And tonight, Alabama and Clemson will play for college football's national championship. The Crimson Tide are a slight favorite, seven points over the undefeated Tigers. Both teams earn the right to play in this game after convincing wins in the college football playoffs. You know, our players are very excited about the opportunity they've created for themselves to uh, have a chance to participate in uh, the college football playoff against uh, arguably the best team in college football, which is you know, the Clemson Tigers. To me, this is the way it ought to be. Uh, you know, I am very proud of our team. To go 14-0 uh, is really difficult to do. And for these guys to rise up and, and um, accept every challenge and get themselves ready each and every week is, is a great compliment to our team. And that will be an 8.30 kickoff tonight out in Arizona. Coming up in the next half hour, Cal responds to the latest story linking him to the NBA, and we'll have more with Ty Winyard. Stay with us now as we continue after the break.